Greetings, my beautiful lovelies. It's Emmy. Welcome back. Today, I'm going to be testing a Salvador Dali recipe, and it comes from this beautiful book. It's called Les Dines de Gala. So this was originally printed in 1973 and was reissued. And when I learned about it, I knew I had to get my mitts on it because look, it is beautiful. Now, Salvador Dali, if you don't know him, was a famous surrealist artist who made etchings and paintings and drawings and was famous for his very long mustache. But his muse was his wife, Gala. And this book, Les Dines de Gala is a cookbook that of course is dedicated to her and his love of food and cookery. Now, like Dali, this book is very interesting. Le Mange de Gala, it's the aphrodisiac chapter. <laughs> There's Dali himself. Some paintings. It feels very much in the realm of Hieronymus Bosch. And we've got all kinds of drawings here. And here is an example of a recipe. This is a recipe number two. This is Oasis Leek Pie. A lot of phallic imagery, I would say. And because this was originally published in 1973, much of the food styling is of that time as well. So today I'm going to be making this recipe. When I read it, it piqued my interest because it's for thousand year old eggs or century eggs are originally Chinese. They're also called pitan and they are a way of preserving eggs. And the way they're made is there's an alkaline solution and the eggs are placed raw into that solution and allowed to sit for a period of time, not a hundred years, not even a thousand years, more like a hundred days. And by sitting in that alkaline kind of brine, the eggs take on a very dark color and completely change. I actually have a taste test video. I'll put the link up above and down below in case you haven't seen it. I also have plans of making my own, so look for that video soon. At any rate, this process completely transforms the egg. It becomes this kind of dark, gray yolk, and the white part kind of gelatinizes and becomes this kind of transparent, amberish color. It's completely amazing and to me quite delicious if eaten correctly. Now, Salvador Dali does not claim to make the same kind of egg. He's saying, of course, this is an interpretation, quite a delicious one by his account, but similar to the original recipe, this recipe does take some time. Basically, we're creating pickled eggs and Dali says it takes about three weeks for them to taste optimal. So before I went on my trip, I made these eggs with leftover eggs that we had hard boiled and dyed and then I'm going to taste them today because it's been three weeks and I'm curious to see what they are like. Salvador Dali's thousand year old eggs. So let me show you what I did to make them. So first thing you're gonna do is boil a dozen eggs for 10 minutes in salted boiling water. So after boiling the eggs, we went ahead and dyed them because this was a couple weeks before Easter and we were gonna leave on a trip and my kids wanted to dye eggs before Easter. So we dyed our eggs. This was actually really fun. What you do is you take your hot eggs and then you put crayon shavings. You take your crayons and you put them through a sharpener and you take those shavings and place them onto the hot eggs. The eggs melt the wax and you get these really nice marbled eggs. And then after they cool, you put them in your egg dye to give them an extra bit of color. Beautiful, beautiful eggs that are really easy to make. Alrighty, so after you've dyed your eggs, you've done your egg hunt, now you've got a bunch of hard boiled eggs. Next, we're gonna remove the shell from our hard boiled eggs and we're going to make our brine. So what I'm gonna be reading to you is actually a half batch because some of my eggs cracked. So in three quarters of a cup of water, we're gonna add two or three cloves or a pinch of ground cloves, one and a half tablespoons of sugar, one and a half tablespoons of vinegar, and then the recipe says a lot of Tabasco sauce. I don't know really what a lot is, so I just shook it a bunch. <laughs> and then one lemon cut into wedges. About a third of a teaspoon of dried thyme. Then we're gonna bring this to a boil and boil it for 15 minutes. Shut off the flame and add two black tea bags. And then let that steep for about 10 minutes. So in a quart sized jar, you're gonna add one chopped onion and one clove of garlic. Then you're gonna add your eggs and then we're gonna add our brine until the eggs are completely immersed. We're gonna place the lid on, place it in your refrigerator and let it sit there for at least three weeks. So three weeks later, we have this, a jar of eggs, onions and brine. So let's give them a taste. I also wanna show you another recipe that I wanna make and is for this. Dolly. 
Naughty Dolly, look at this. So this is another recipe I wanna make. It's for avocado toast. He was a hipster before it was even hip to be hip. And this avocado toast recipe is interesting because it uses one lamb brain. Now I haven't been able to find lamb brains. I've found some other brains, but when I do, I'm gonna make this recipe because it's gonna be delicious. I've tried brains before, they're scrumptious. I love avocado toast. I've been eating it for years and years and years. Can't wait to taste this one. Okay, let's taste our eggs. Alrighty, so let's open up our eggs. Now I have to say when I was boiling the brine, it didn't smell all that great, but you know, vinegar can be a bit odoriferous. So I said, hmm, but you know, I have faith. I do like pickled and fermented things, so I think I will like this. So, ooh, it smells good. It smells like pickled onions. Oh yeah. Okay, so let's go ahead and fish one of these eggs out. So I'm gonna take out some of the onions so I can reach my eggs. So there's onions, lemon wedges up here. Because we use tea, the eggs have taken on this beautiful little brown color. Now that doesn't look anything like a thousand year old egg, but it doesn't look like a regular egg. So that's something. So here's our pickled egg and let's go ahead and cut it open. Ooh, it's very firm. Huh. Well, there you go. You've got an egg right there. And inside it looks just like a hard boiled egg. The outside, of course, has this really nice dark caramel color to it. Texturally, when I cut it, it seemed quite firm, but these eggs are also cold, but it did seem a little more slightly rubbery. I'm not sure if the vinegar or the brine affects the texture of the egg at all, but I'm about to find out. Okay, let's give this a taste. Itadakimasu. Mm. <laughs> it does affect the texture. The texture is much more rubbery and firmer, like the egg is a little bit dried out. The flavor is not bad. Although it does have a bitterness to it. And I am assuming that it is from the tea that's in there. Wow, interesting. It's not nearly as pickled as I thought it was going to be. I thought, well, granted there's only a tablespoon and a half of vinegar in this, but I was expecting it to be more tangy. But the flavor is more of an oniony bitterness. Hmm, let me try that again. Mmm. I don't particularly care for that. It could use a bit more salt. The texture is very odd. The white is rubberier and drier, and the yolk is quite dry as well. It is a hard boiled egg after all. But the flavor is just not very good either. The bitterness is strong. The onion is kind of the predominant flavor in there. It tastes a bit of the clove, which is kind of nice. It gives it kind of an autumnal spicy flavor, but the predominant flavor is onion and a kind of bitterness. Hmm. A little bit of acidity from the vinegar. Let me grab some salt. Because I want to like it. I like the flavor combinations, but the bitter aftertaste at the end isn't very nice. I think mostly it's the texture. Mm, mm, okay. The addition of salt is definitely an improvement, but still that twinge of bitterness with the sulfurous hard boiled egg along with the onion flavors doesn't really work for me. So I'd much prefer a true pidan or century or a thousand year old egg. So look for that video soon. I really hope it works out. Today it's done commercially, but the process is quite fascinating. You make an alkaline mud essentially and wrap traditionally a duck egg. I might use my fresh chicken eggs. And then you coat the eggs with this alkaline mud, which is made out of different types of ash, wood ash, charcoal ash, and some lime. And then you let that sit for about a hundred days. And then you should get a hundred year old egg or a thousand year old eggs. So 
I'm super excited about that. So I've already purchased the materials that I will need. I'm just waiting for them to arrive. So do follow my Insta story so you can see some of the behind the scenes on the whole process of making DIY thousand year old eggs. So there's the Dali version. Didn't really care for this one, but there are plenty of other recipes for me to test out and try in this beautiful, lovely book by Salvador Dali. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. I hope you guys learned something. Please share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media. Be sure to check out the egg playlist up above. And yeah, I shall see you in the next one. Toodaloo. Take care. Bye. <laughs>